Hello biology students. Today we're going to be talking about sex-linked inheritance, also called X-linked. Let's jump in. So we're going to review a couple different things. Um, the number of chromosomes in each body cell or somatic cell of a human is 46. And we know that if there's 46, 23 come from mom, 23 come from dad. That means there are 23 homologous pairs of chromosomes. We number them, all right, when we put them out in order for size, we put them in their homologous pairs of same size, same genes. We see that all 23 pairs are there, but notice that we don't number the 23rd pair with 23 so much because we know that those are actually our sex chromosomes. We call all the other chromosomes autosomes, but these are sex chromosomes. All right, we know that XX is female, XY is male, and we're going to be talking about these chromosomes today. Let's jump in. So just make sure you're very, very clear that XX is female and XY is male because that is one of the most important things to being able to do our genetic stuff today. So um, when we are doing Punnett squares, we really need to know who determines the sex of a child, right? A female always gives an X to her child. Um, so then who determines the sex? The father, of course, because a father can give a male child his, uh, if he gives his an X to match with the X of the mom, that's XX making a girl. If the dad gives a Y, that's X plus Y making a boy. We could show this by doing a Punnett square, showing the two things mom could possibly give and the two things dad could possibly give showing that really every time a baby's made, there's really a 50-50 chance of male or female child, right? That's not the big stuff for today, but what we are interested in is then some of the genes that are on these different chromosomes. So we're going to be talking specifically about X-linking genes or sex-linked traits. They are genes on these sex chromosomes. Which of the chromosomes is bigger, the X or the Y? the X. And because it's so much bigger, almost all of these sex-linked traits are found on the X chromosome, which is why I've highlighted X a couple times here, because I almost like to call this X-linked traits instead of sex-linked. There are a couple examples we'll see in all of our word problems. A lot of these are color blindness. The most common color blindness is red-green color blindness. This would be that they couldn't distinguish between the green 12 and the red background. That would be red-green color blindness. Another is a blood clotting disorder called hemophilia. Those people struggle to make as much of the platelets that clot the blood when they get small cuts or bruises and they struggle to heal them as well. So these are things that are found on the X chromosome and how they are inherited is kind of interesting since they're on these specific chromosomes. So let's see how that works. So we have to, again, like we've done before, do allele notation. We're going to use the example of color blindness. This could work for any of the different other examples you'll see in the future. So here are our possible phenotypes. For each of them, we're going to write the proper genotype notation. For our first one, normal color vision female, we're going to bring out that that is XX with big N. Big N is going to represent normal. All right. And the next one, normal color vision female, but she's a carrier for the abnormal thing in this case abnormal color vision, we have a hidden lowercase recessive little n. A colorblind female, the only way she can be colorblind is if she's homozygous for the two abnormal little n's. A normal color vision male is big XN with an uppercase normal, big N is normal, where Y is the other thing. Well that's interesting, can he be homozygous? Can he be heterozygous? No, he can't, because he only has one X, all right? So the colorblind male is the little n abnormal X. So there's no way a male can be a carrier. So who do you think gets these sex-linked things more often? Males, 
because females can be carriers and carriers tend to hide the abnormal thing and don't actually have the existence of the problem. They might be able to pass it on to their offspring, but males show the disease or disorder more often than not. Let's do two practice problems and then we'll practice more in class. Please write the problem down and go through the steps. A carrier female marries a normal color vision male. What are the chances they have a colorblind child? Okay, a carrier female, female sign, is going to be the following with the male. All right, so here's our male symbol. Here's our female symbol. All right, our female, she's carrier. That means she's heterozygous. She's hiding the abnormal little n. And the male is normal color vision, uppercase n. So now I'm going to do the cross. I'm going to use my Punnett square just like how I always do. It does not matter if I put mom or dad on either side. I'm just going to randomly pick. Okay. And then I'm going to follow my normal stuff. But I have to make sure I keep really good track of if I'm writing an uppercase N or a lowercase N or an X or a Y. If you do this too fast, it might get messy and you might not be able to read your responses. So my first box, this is what I would get bringing down this guy and bringing that guy across. In my next box, I would get a male that's normal. In this box, I get a carrier female from this and this. And then here I get a abnormal male. So next I have to answer the actual question at hand. What are the chances they'll have a colorblind child? Well, the only one that's colorblind is actually this box. Even though this child has an abnormal little n, they are a carrier, so they don't actually look abnormal. That is the benefit of being a female. She has two x's, more chance of being a carrier rather than actually having the disorder. A male has no chance of being a carrier. So to answer our question, originally it's 25 percent colorblind if we were asked to do the genotype and phenotype ratios here's what we would write and please write the following the genotype ratios would be the following 25 percent normal female homozygous normal female 25 percent carrier female zero percent abnormal female 25 percent normal male 25% abnormal male. If I were to do phenotype, what we could do is we would just not, I'll not pay attention to the carrier female. 50% of these are normal females. Yes, one of them is a carrier, but she is still normal. 50% of the boxes, right? Right? We have 0% colorblind females. None of them were colorblind. 25% normal males. Okay, that's representing this one box. 25% colorblind males. All right, so hopefully now you get it. This is a hard task, so we're going to do one more practice at home and then a lot of practicing in class. Here's our second scenario. A homozygous normal female marries a colorblind male. What are the chances they will have a child with normal vision? Okay, here are our parents. Homozygous normal, colorblind male. Here's our colorblind male. The homozygous normal. Notice she has both of the big ends. Using that cross, we do our Punnett square. You try first. Okay. Filling in our answers. Then we would do our answer to the question What are the chances they will have a child born with normal vision? This child's normal. This child's normal. This child's a carrier, but is normal. This child's a carrier, but is normal. They're all normal. So the benefit is that it is less likely, right, that this man is really going to affect his offspring to have abnormal vision because he gives his ex to his daughters. And if the mom is fully homozygous normal, she's going to help them be carriers. And then they won't actually be colorblind. Pretty cool. So 100% normal is our answer to our question. We do want to practice doing our ratios. Here are our ratios. 0% homozygous normal female, 
50% carrier female, 0% abnormal female, 50% normal male, 0% abnormal male. 50% of these boxes were normal females. They were carriers though. 50% were normal males. These add up to be 100. That makes sense. And 0% colorblind male or female. Wonderful job. Let's practice more together when we see each other.